Lane. We're about circa 16,000 people here. And obviously some really cool announcements from Databricks as well. Compound AI systems, right? I think that's such a phenomenal uh, emerging space. You now have the ability to use an open data format, whether it be Iceberg, whether it be Delta, it doesn't really matter to us. We've got this fantastic uniform capability. Most customers, they can't get to those AI insights until they have the data landed in an open format and until that data is of quality and is trusted and it's secured. Uh, so that is the first piece of the puzzle. And uh, that's where the data engineering work comes in. Just get started. What have you got to lose? These are open source projects. Get onto GitHub, download them, uh, you know, kick the tires, test it and uh, get involved. Absolutely incredible. I think it's been amazing to see, number one, how many customers, partners, and folks from academia are here in attendance. I think we're about circa 16,000 people here, which is just phenomenal. Uh, and what I enjoy most about that is like the community and the collaboration and sharing that we see on you know amazing topics around how to get value and derive value out of data and AI. So the discussions, the corridor conversations and presentations have just been phenomenal. And obviously some really cool announcements from Databricks as well. I think for me, it's uh, compound AI systems, right? I think that's such a phenomenal uh, emerging space uh, in this domain. Okay. And I think, you know, we've seen this evolution of folks trying to figure out how they use generative AI, starting to build like assistance okay. and moving on to uh, looking at RAG patterns, you know, search retrieval augmented generative uh, capability, uh, and then moving on to kind of build and continuously pre-train their own models and then fine tune them and then use them for inference purposes. And that whole journey has been quite um, serial in nature, right? But the reality is it's not a serial process. It's a process in which all of these are viable options and actually you want to figure out how you use each of these potential capabilities and these different sort of, uh, you know, capabilities in tandem. And I think that's the huge value of these compound AI systems. How do we make these models uh, better at integrating with other systems upstream and downstream? How do we build tools around the models so that they operate in these compound systems and provide even better insights uh, and better capabilities for customers and citizens? Yeah, so I think that's the most exciting thing to me. Getting to these um, sort of uh, the value, right, that can be derived uh, out of these models requires great data that's of quality and that is governed, right? You need to be able to trust the data that is uh, supporting the outcome. I think one, it's going to allow developers to um, you know, uh, be capable of leveraging trusted data more, right? Mm -hmm. And it will simplify the administration and uh, operational burden of getting to trusted data. Uh, and they won't have to worry about you know, the format war that's underpinning that and they won't have to worry about kind of like whether there's any lock-in. I know with these things, it's always a fear of lock-in, like, hey, you're locking me into the format, you're locking me into the catalog. In this instance, you know, with it being open source, that's no longer a concern. Well, I think, again, it goes back to, you know, if you, yeah, if you have all of your data uh, in a format, uh, that is open uh, and that is governed and controlled centrally, okay. then you can start to really enforce expectations of that data, okay. make sure the data is of quality and certify that, you know, the the actual metrics around some of how these things are calculated as well are certified metrics and represent real business uh, calculations that you use in your, in your world. And I think if you do that, um, that allows this, you know, this uh, sort of citizen data analysts, these new sort of emerging uh, users that don't know how to program, that don't know how to use things like SQL or Scala or Python. Um, it'll allow them to interact with the data in natural language. Your language becomes your, your superpower. And all of that will be derived uh, through this AI-infused capability that's in the platform. So you won't have to codify anything, you won't have to know how to write a single line of code. All you need to be is data literate, right? Understand the value that data creates, um, understand 
what sort of questions you want to ask of the data and just formulate that in the language of your choice. Yeah, look, I think we, we firmly prescribe to the notion that if uh, you're not embracing data and AI, okay. you're really going to be left behind, right? You just want to get started, right? Like whatever you do, just get started. Start to think about how you can leverage data and AI to differentiate your products and services. And the most successful companies going forward, the most successful CXOs going forward, they are going to be data literate. They're going to be AI capable and they're going to be using these products and services, these sort of platforms to differentiate their products, their services, and the business value that they create for the stakeholders. So yeah, I think if you're not doing that, you're going to get left behind. Well, I think it's a combination of all of those things. And again, probably going back to that mm -hmm. sort of compound AI system view, right? So if you think about that end to end, okay. um, hey, we've got now our C level that is data literate, that can work with the data, that can ask questions of the data. They may come up with you know scenarios that they want to be explored further. Yeah. They'll be able to you know in a team sport like manner really draw upon the data engineers to go and go hey go source us some more data go and find us some more data to kind of enrich this problem and to build uh, more insights right we need more enriched data to kind of answer the problem space. They'll be able to then you know give that on to analysts mm -hmm. in the same sort of environment to then go and explore and visualize and you know, double click into the data to see if they can find something interesting in the data and then kind of resurface that back to the sea level very, very seamlessly. So I think the big change there will be the team sports like manner in which we can operate on top of this data in these sort of platforms is going to allow everyone to collaborate and share in real time on the data, on the insights um, and drive more and more innovation and value out for our customers. Yeah. Yes, yeah, look, that has always been our strategy, 100%. So we want to democratize data and AI for everyone. That's uh, that's kind of our mission and purpose of being. Okay. And that starts with giving you uh, and ensuring that you have control of your data. And if we can help our customers to get that data into, uh, you know, those open data formats that are universally now, uh, you know, accepted, we want to do that. We want to help our customers get there. Uh, and that puts them in control of the data, which is ultimately their secret source. That's what's going to differentiate their products. That's what's they're going to differentiate their services. So we want to get all our customers there. And then really what we want to do is once they've got the data there and once they've got it governed and secured, how do we help them accelerate the time to insight? So how do we accelerate the time to value? That's really where we want to lean in. And I think that's where we can bring some of the magic. Um, but the magic from the customer is their data. We want them to own their data. We want them to control their data. And we want their data to be in an open format, in a cloud of their choice. And even if they choose to take it back on-prem, so be it. It's in an open format. They can do that. I'm excited. Like, you know, what typically happens post this event is I spend a lot of time talking to, you know, wonderful folks like yourselves, but getting out and seeing our customers and our partners. I spend a lot of time with academia as well. I'm just excited to get on the road and kind of share all of these innovations with everyone, figure out how they can use them, how we can help them use them, how, how we can accelerate that time to value. Um, and that means, you know, yeah, a lot of time traveling, but, uh, I love it. I think uh, for me, that's the most rewarding part of the job, mm -hmm. learning uh, from customers, understanding their business problems and figuring out how we can build great innovations together is probably the most exciting part of the job. So spending lots of time in India, mm -hmm. I'll be spending lots of time in Japan, Korea, okay. uh, Thailand, mm -hmm. Malaysia, Singapore, you name it, I'm going to be everywhere and uh, <laughs> I'm going to enjoy it because I've got so much goodness so, to share. So, wow. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, look, I think it's fantastic that we have a platform that can do anything from okay. the data engineering to the business intelligence, the visualization thereof, the data quality, the management, the governance, all the way through to the AI. But you're right, uh, inevitably, when when we have these discussions, most, most customers, there are exceptions, most customers are probably earlier in that journey, right? And they can't get to those AI insights until... They have the data landed in open format and until that data is of quality and is trusted and it's secured. Uh, so that is the first piece of the puzzle. And uh, that's where the data engineering work comes in. 
you got to figure out how you ingest it, you got to figure out how you transform it, you got to make sure it's of quality, and you got to manage that life cycle end to end in as simple a way as you can. So we continue to put a lot of effort into that because most customers are still there. They're still right at the heart of, hey, I've got all these legacy data systems. How do I bring all the data together? How do I make that super simple data breaks help me solve that problem? Um, so yeah, we, we spend a fair amount of time there, but once we get through that, we've got some fantastic capability to build all the AI smarts as well. Yeah, I'd just say, look, um, uh, hopefully it's a testament to uh, testament to itself. Like our, our commitment being reinforced to open source. Uh, you saw uh, Matei do it live today. Yes. Uh, we've uh, open sourced a Unity catalog. We continue to build uh, the default open standard when it comes to the data format. Uh, you know, there's no other choice in my mind uh, around kind of the de facto standard for data uh, in the cloud in the governance secure way. And all I'd encourage kind of customers, prospects, partners, academia that's out there, just get started. What have you got to lose? These are open source projects. Get onto GitHub, download them, uh, you know, kick the tires, test it, and uh, get involved, get into the community and get involved. Um, and I've got no doubt you'll absolutely love what we're building and you'll get a huge amount of value out of it. So just uh, get on to GitHub and get downloading. Oh, interesting, the universe. <laughs> <laughs>